Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, to the Cultured Food Life podcast show. And I am Donna, and I am your host, and I am so excited for the new year of 2019. I'm glad you're here today. I hope you've had a wonderful holiday season, and I hope you're having a great day, um, New Year's Day today. I'm hoping that all of um, your family is well, and you've had a wonderful holiday. And I want to talk to you about this upcoming year and some things I've learned throughout the years that have really, really helped me. But before I do that, I want to go back to 2017, and it was a summer I had um, done classes. I was doing. I usually do classes every summer. And it was called Camp Trilogy, and I teach people how to change their life by making probiotic cultured foods. And the class was over, and everybody had left except for one lady who was standing in the back. And she looked at me with big, huge eyes and started walking towards me. And before she could say a word, the tears began running down her cheeks, and she kept apologizing for crying. And first of all, When somebody cries around me, they never cry alone because as soon as they do, I will join in with them because tears are powerful medicine and our bodies hold all of our pain and joy. And when we cry, those chemical components get released in a very powerful way. It's very healing. And if you come to my classes, you'd probably be surprised to see me crying at my cooking classes, talking about um, how much I love these foods, how much they've changed my life and how much they can change your life. Um, You can't control the joy. Um, I can't control the joy that I feel when I speak about them because the gratefulness that I feel um, for how they healed me and for the miracles that they've performed in my life um, as I share it and as I explain to you all the lessons that I've continued to learn for the last 16, 17 years, it's hard to control the, the emotional joy that I feel. And um, I love it when we all help each other with our struggles and when we heal ourselves. And when we heal ourselves, we heal each other. So cry away because it's really good for you. Uh, it's, it's medicine for the body. It releases those emotions and chemicals that get trapped into our tissues that need healing. And I have found it to be one of the greatest blessings in my life. Okay, now back to the lady in the story. As she stood in front of me, crying and apologizing, she told me her story of how grateful she was to meet me and just how much learning uh, all about these different foods had changed her life and especially her health. She expressed this with tears of joys that could not be contained, and believe you me, I understand that kind of joy. But what she didn't know was that it wasn't me that changed her, it was her. It's never me that does it. I just kind of nudge you in that direction. She had found her way to wellness when she didn't think she could. And I was just the support and the encouragement that pushed her into wellness, the lighthouse. Because when you heal yourself, you become a lighthouse for others. But I, I have a firm belief that I never do the healing. I just show you what happened to me. And you do the work. You do the healing yourself. But it's it's hard to be around somebody who is well without you desiring it too. And when you're going through sickness and despair or even the unma- unimaginable um, or whatever it is, it's our struggles through all of that that can be the greatest blessings to ourselves and to others. And you may think that you need a bunch of New Year resolutions this year. But maybe instead, you should do as I have done. When you can't find the answers to struggles, thank them. Thank those struggles. Ask them what they're here to teach you. And then turn your mind and body towards wellness. And you will attract what you need into your life. And if you're listening to me, then you and I are a match and we can help one another. You wouldn't be here if you weren't seeking wellness. And it's just a little breadcrumb that's trying to point you in the direction of wellness. And you're going to get them showing up in your life. I can show you all the things that made me well, and it will help you too. All you need to do is reach out and try. 
and there is always help for you, and the answers are always coming. I love this quote by um, Mother Teresa that said, if we have no peace, we have forgotten that we belong to each other. And you and I are here to help one another. And when you get well, you help me. I got a letter from a lady this week. She sent in a Lives Touched um, testimonial. And I have a page on my website at culturefoodlife.com where people send in uh, their wellness stories and healings and things that have happened to them. And it was so miraculous, and it was so wonderful. And let me share it with you. This is Deborah's story, and I'm going to tell it to you in her words. Hello. My story starts about 55 years ago, and it has to do with cancer and probiotics. Let me start about two years ago, though, when I first got interested in kefir. I was keeping the kefir culture going and using it about once a week at that time. And then two months ago, I was having trouble with my urinary tract. I decided to go back to my natural soap to balance out my bacteria. Harsh soaps soaps were killing it. And I upped my my kefir intake to twice a day. And yes, it worked. No more symptoms. I revisited your site again after not doing so for a couple of years and decided to listen to some of the podcasts you were doing in our kitchen where my husband could hear them. Stosh, my husband, being a good cook, was intrigued and said he was going to make his own and make it right. Well, we both got hooked and we were enjoying cultured vegetables, kefir, kefir cheese, and our first kombucha will be ready in a day or two. We are in our mid-60s and our energy is up in only two weeks and we are sleeping like babies. Now back to about 55 years ago. When I was 10, I was diagnosed with cancer. My mother was told I had about four months to live. My poor mom would go into my bedroom in the morning to see if I was alive. Radiation treatments where the doctors advised were fairly new And then mom decided they were too dangerous. She sought out natural treatments, and I was treated by Dr. Mash Gershwin, and his daughter continues his work today at Gershwin.org. I was also given a new herbal formula by Dr. McQueen Williams that was on that time just tested on animals and successful, but they wanted a person to test it on. That was me. I was also given two quarts of a day, what was called Molden, which my mom was taught by Dr. Minnie Burke from Russia on how to make a drink from bread and water that was fermented. Well, the lights went on when I was hearing about your Chris, and others have been helped and cured with the additions of cultured drinks like kombucha. I too was on cultured food back in the mid in, in the, back in the early '60s, and my doctors who gave up on me were astounded at the time. My case was taken before the U.S. Congress in 1974, when then President Nixon asked that cancer be eradicated and instituted the National Cancer Attack Act. Unfortunately, nothing good came from that act, and my guess is that the drug companies were less than thrilled. Mom even went up before the American Medical Association in courts, stating my case, but that went nowhere. But thank you, Donna, for spreading the word. I am doing the same, and perhaps many more lives will be improved to a good health or even saved. This picture picture of me is at my age, 67. All my best for peace and good health. Deborah. And you can see her picture on my website at culturedfoodlife.com, and you can go to the Lives Touch page and see her story and so many other stories. And um, she talks about my my Chris. My Chris is my website manager, and he does so much more than that. He's really responsible for the way that my site works and runs, and he helps do just about everything. And uh, Chris, when I first met him, had cancer. And actually, I had met him. He was friends with my children, but I didn't really uh, know him very well or hadn't seen him in years. And when he first contacted me, I had just started my, my blog and he contacted, he was like the second person to contact me on my Facebook page that had only been up for like a day or two. And he asked me how to make kombucha. Well, fast forward uh, many years later, Chris is cancer free, I think six years now, maybe longer. And uh, he did go through some treatment. Um, he had stage three um, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and uh, probiotic foods were a big part of his life. And he also did the other treatments too. But um, he's doing great. He is a wonderful believer in the things that I talk about, and he lives it. And him and his family, and his four children, and his wife all eat cultured foods on a regular basis. And for good reason, because um, many of the research suggests that if your gut 
uh, doesn't have the right bacteria because things like radiation and chemo destroy the gut lining and bacteria rebuilds it. And if you don't have the right kind of bacteria, it's hard to survive the chemo. And um, he he is a firm believer in, uh, it was funny the other day, his kids got some kind of stomach virus and he he called me and he said, I watched it go through each kid. It was um, one by one, but it would only last like a day and they, they would be over it. And he said, but my wife and I haven't got it, but his wife upped her cultured foods and he did not. So he started to feel like he was going to get it. <laughs> so he went and took every manner of culture food that he could find. And not only did he not get sick, but he started to detox like crazy because he had so many. And uh, it's it's a wonderful testament to uh, how powerful these foods are. They work like medicine. They work to keep you well, but so does your bacteria every day of your life. 99% of the bacteria in your body is good or harmless that is keeping you well every day, is helping you do a myriad of things from digesting your food to boosting your immune system um, to lowering inflammation uh, to keeping you really healthy. And we just don't know a lot about it, but I'm the messenger here, and I'm here to help help you understand all the wonderful things that it can do to improve your health. And the reason I'm doing that is because it changed me so dramatically. Never in a million years did I think that good bacteria would be the answer to my cries for help. But indeed it was. And fast forward 17 years later, and I'm still here talking about it, learning about it, living it each day, and discovering new things that I never knew were possible, uh, mostly due to your emails, your letters, your testimonies that you send in to me, and the new research that is springing up everywhere. When I started, there wasn't a lot of research. Well, now it is all over the place. And so most of my articles and blogs all have research links in them uh, to help validate what I say and to help you understand that it's not just, you know, me saying it. It, it is actual. There's a lot of science behind it now because uh, we are out of that era where bacteria is bad. It used to be that the only thing anybody ever talked about when it came to bacteria was that it was harmful, it was bad, and you had to kill it with antibiotics or antibacterial soaps. Well, now uh, research has changed and people are realizing that we can harness the good bacteria, which is way more than the harmful bacteria, and change our lives and change our health. And I hope um, that my life will help do that in some way because it has made all the difference for me. And I want to share this other story that is, um, it's just kind of a, a holiday theme story, but it really touched my heart and I, and I hope that it would help you to feel some hope and some encouragement, encouragement if you're struggling with something. It was Christmas time and her name was Carl Harvey and she answered an early morning knock on her front door and two policemen stood there grimly passing on the terrible news that her 20-year-old son, Chad, had been found murdered. Grief-stricken, she went through the motions of the funeral and his life, but as Christmas approached, Carl found herself giving vent to disappointment and anger with God. He had really failed her, she thought, and why hadn't he protected her son as she had so often prayed? In desperation, she prayed, God, if you care about me, I need a miracle. Otherwise, I think I'll probably die, and she waited. And that Christmas, her miracle came. One night, the doorbell rang. When Carl's 13-year-old daughter answered it, she found a gift, but no giver, nor any mark of identifying the giver. The gift was a tree branch with apples planted in it, and a blue plastic nightingale perched on top, and attached was a piece of paper which read, On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. We couldn't find a partridge, and our pear tree died, so you'll have to settle for a bluebird in an apple tree. The very next evening, there was another ring on the doorbell and another gift. And through, and through Sarah, Cheryl's daughter, she raced to the door. She wasn't fast enough to discover who the mystery giver was, but this time there was a box containing two Turtle Dove brand chocolate bars. And the note read, On the second day of Christmas, my true love sent to me two Turtle Doves. And on it went for the next 10 days. The third day were three Cornish hens. The fourth day, there was a cassette tape with songs which had the word bird in the title and a calling card. Four calling cards. On the fifth day, five golden rings were freshly cooked donuts, and it continued for 12 days. 
Carl found that this was her miracle, and for the first time since Chad's death, she began looking forward to the next day, wanting to know what would come next. Thinking of the time, that time, she said, my miracle. When I couldn't talk to God, when I didn't even have, even want to talk to Him, He sent me miracles through someone else, using earthly hands to send it to me, but His fingerprints were all over it. So this is my gift to you, my friends. Each weekly podcast show, each weekly blog article I write, every single thing I do is to convince you of your own wellness. You guys just need to tweak a few things you're doing. And some of these special probiotic foods I make, if you could just try them and harness the power of the 100 trillion microbes that live inside of you and all around you, and that were designed to keep you well and digest your food, boost your immune system, fight for it invaders, and the, the things that want to infect you and create disease, but they will boost your mood and emotions and fill you with joy and wellness. That is my mission. That is who I want to be in the world. So you can make your New Year's resolutions to thank your body every day. That is the thing that I do every day of every year. Every morning when I get up, I thank my body for keeping me well. And I also thank the sickness and the struggles that came into my life and that sometimes still will ring their little, uh, will bring about things that I didn't expect, but I learned so much from them. And if I ask to learn through everything that comes into my life, and I do every single time, and then you are the recipients of the things that I learned. Everybody who's listening to me should look at your hands. Do you see them? There, there are millions and trillions of microbes. They know you, but you don't know them. And if you thank them and ask them to teach you, and then hang on to your hats because your life is going to change. Microbes are little, but they are mighty. They were placed in you and all around you for a very important reason. Just you wait and see. I hope you'll keep listening, and I hope you find the wellness that you so rightfully deserve. Happy New Year, everybody. It is a blessing to have you in my life, and it is my great joy to share with you all the things that I have learned, hoping that it will enhance and enrich your life. Happy New Year.